Want to see a cool magic trick? Alexa, lights off. Alexa, speaker lights on. Alexa, lights off. Alexa, speaker lights on. Oh yeah, guys. The JTR Noesis 212 HTR speakers are finally here. Now, before we jump into the video, I wanted to let you know about a giveaway that we're doing here on the channel. Fiaton has provided a pair of their 900 legacy noise canceling headphones to give away here on the channel. I recently reviewed these headphones, which I'll link to in the card above. Now this giveaway is open globally, so be sure to check out the link to it in the description below. I was invited last March by the owner of JTR to fly up to Wisconsin to visit their headquarters. Jeff gave me a tour of the facility and I got to see firsthand what goes into JTR speakers, including massive hand-built crossovers, high-end coaxial drivers, and his monstrous subwoofers. Now during that visit, I also was able to visit two JTR home theaters as well as a JTR two-channel setup. So we first went to Scott Newby's home to experience his five JTR 228HT speakers and nine 18-inch woofers. That's right, Scott had nine 18 subwoofers in his home theater. Now I say had because Scott currently has 14 18-inch subwoofers in his setup. It is the closest I have ever come to experiencing what an earthquake feels like. Scott's system could produce 146.8 decibels of max SPL from those nine 18-inch woofers, and he measured his subwoofers down to 121.7 dB at 10 Hz and 119.8 dB at 8 Hz. Now, I have never experienced bass quite that extreme in a home theater setup. Now, for the record, Scott doesn't listen to it at those extreme levels all the time. It's mainly just when he's doing some short demos for guests. And yes, during that demo, I was wearing hearing protection. We then headed over to Tony's home theater to check out his JTR system. In Tony's setup, he had five JTR 212 RT towers, three JTR 4000 ULF subwoofers, as well as D-box seating and fans that even turned on during the movie for a 4D experience. Now, Tony's setup literally is the most incredible sounding and most immersive Dolby Atmos home theater I've ever experienced. Now, Tony has spent a lot of time dialing in his setup and his room is very well treated. And so it was just absolutely phenomenal. Now, during the trip, I also got to hang out with Jeff in his home and hear his large 215 RTs in his two channel setup. Now, I'll have a link to all four of those videos down in the description below if you wanna check those out after this video. But after this trip, I walked away just with a new uh, expanded appreciation of what home theater could sound like as well as what music could sound like in a home. But it was also just opened up my eyes to exactly what a lot of you were telling me, and that is, Michael, you've got to hear for yourself JTR speakers and their subwoofers. Now, what I like the most about the sound signature of JTR is they actually have a lot of same similar characteristics that I love and have always loved about clip speakers. They've got incredible clarity, great detail, and just huge dynamic range. And so these speakers really take what I love about clips and have just taken it to the next level. So now let's take a closer look at the JTR 212 HTR speakers. And by the end of this video, I'll share with you whether or not there'll be a new permanent addition to my home theater.
Now in full disclosure, JTR did send these speakers in for review, but they are seeing this video the same time you are and do not have any say so in my thoughts or comments on this video. Now looking at the front, the Noesis 212 HTM are a three-way design with dual 12 inch high excursion woofers that provide 10 millimeters X max each way in a vented enclosure. Between the woofers is a large coaxial compression driver, which means it has a tweeter and a mid-range paired in a large horn for controlled directivity. The 212 HTM have a frequency range of 60 Hz to 24,000 kilohertz. Now, although they don't dig super deep, they're meant to be paired with subwoofers and provide plenty of that mid-bass slam. And with the 101 dB sensitivity, it makes them easy to drive even at reference levels, but being 4 ohm speakers, it's probably best that you power them with a dedicated power amplifier versus just an AVR. The 212 HTM have a usable output up to 134 decibels and can handle 2000 watts RMS. The speakers measure 40 inches by 16.5 inches by 14 inches, weigh 125 pounds each, and are constructed of 24 millimeter eight ply Baltic birch and are heavily braced internally. Looking at the rear, you'll find two massive five-way binding posts that accept up to two gauge wire. They're available in matte black, but custom finishes can be added for an additional cost. The speaker grills are held in place by strong magnets and the speaker grill itself is made of a thick, durable piece of wood. The 212 HTMs carry a five-year warranty and cost $29.99 each. Now, over the past three days, I haven't done any critical listening with the 212 HTRs, but I have watched quite a bit of content and listened to a lot of music. So a couple of things that we've watched so far is uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I've gone through three or four episodes of uh, WandaVision. And if you haven't seen either one of those, I definitely highly recommend those. It's been a lot of fun so far. And then last night I invited a friend over and we watched an older movie, World War Z. So one of the questions I've been getting a lot, even just the past three days, is how do they compare with the La Scalas? Um, like I mentioned earlier, one of the biggest things that I love about JTR speakers, and in particular these 212s, is they have a lot of similar characteristics. Clarity, detail, dynamics, there it's right there. And so one of the things that I really love about the La Scalas is their mid-range. And the 212s, I think that's where they really, really excel. In all of the home theaters and two-channel setups that I've heard so far, that JTR horn, the coaxial driver, especially the ones that have the R series in them, which is the reference, um, those just have a really high end coaxial driver that has a tweeter and a mid range. And so it's coming directly from that horn. And in my setup, the 212s have the horn a little bit lower positioned than my La Scala, so they're more in line with my ears. Now, even though the La Scala's have a 15 inch driver in them, any La Scala owner will tell you that La Scala's are not known for low bass extension. I think they're only rated to about 70 hertz uh, as far as usable output, but the bass that they do produce is very clean. It's very low distortion. There's just not a ton of it, so you definitely have to pair them with a subwoofer. Now these, the 212s, they extend down to about 60 hertz, so definitely not a lot lower, but I would think um, in this setup, they're probably going to produce more of that mid-bass slam with 212s versus a single 15. And just the nature and the design of these speakers, I think that's kind of where they're going to really shine in that area. But the La Scala's, like I said, they sound great, um, but in my system, for whatever reason, music was always lacking. Um, and I don't listen to a ton of music anyway, but I find myself listening to more music even already with the 212s than I do with the La Scala's. Prime example, my daughter came in here the other day and I asked her to pull up on her phone, uh, you know, some music and, and just kind of, let's just, you know, see what they sound like together. And so she cranked it up and, and started playing through her little playlist and we were just jamming in here, just really enjoying music and two channel for the first time. And so um, I don't have these dialed in. I'm still trying to figure out, okay, where's the best, um, kind of what is the best toe in angle, which is where you take the speakers instead of just firing straight, they're kind of angled 
towards your listening position. I want to try different things because these are going to have a different dispersion pattern than my Las Scalas. And so that'll take some time kind of getting that dialed in um, and then just figuring out the, the correct crossover position for uh, my home theater. And so right now I've got them set up to uh, 60 hertz on my AVR, or I'm sorry, on my processor. Um, but so far, just overall, man, they just bring a smile to my face. I've listened to uh, Lady Gaga on uh, A Star is Born. Love that. Again, the vocals on it is where this really shines. The 212s, her voice just seems more pronounced. It seems um, more defined, and it just kind of has more overall presence. Um, and when I'm watching a movie, the dialogue, especially, like I said, coming from that center channel speaker, I just hear the voices a little bit clearer, um, and there's just more detail and kind of more of a, a forward presence to that. And so I'm really liking what I'm hearing so far in the 212 HTRs. So the big question everybody's been asking me so far is will the 212 HTRs be replacing my 41-year-old Klipsch La Scalas? And the answer is absolutely. This is something that I have been working towards pretty much over the past year since I left JTR and heard them for the first time. Now my plan is to eventually replace my Klipsch RS62 version 2 side surrounds and rear surrounds with matching JTR surrounds. Currently I'm looking at the JTR Noesis 110 HTSL speakers, which are a two-way surround sound speaker with a 10-inch mid-range coaxial with a one-inch compression driver behind an acoustic transparent dust cover. Now a lot of you guys asked why I went with the 212 HTMs as opposed to the larger 215 HTs. Now the main reason is I just don't need any more bottom end output from larger uh, LCR speakers. The uh, RS2s are flat in my room down to 8 hertz and I've got usable output of about 100 dB at 4 hertz and so I don't need any more low end extension. What I'm looking for is just good mid bass slam, great mid range and great vocals and I think that the 212s are going to do that just fine. Now, after I've spent a lot more time with the 212 HTRs, I'll be doing a full review of the speakers here on the channel, so make sure you're subscribed. I'll also drop a link down in the description below to the Fiaton headphone giveaway. And as always, you guys be blessed, and we'll catch you in the next video.